Confirmation means you have to change from something, from one disposition to another. When the human being was created, the human being didn't come here with two arms and two legs and a head. At the first stage of the development of the human being, it was what the Quran calls a nutfa, a sperm. Meaning looking at this, you have to have a microscope to even see it. And when you see it, it resembles nothing of the human being that you and I look like. But yet, through a process in the dark of confirmation, it began to change. It began to evolve from that nutfa into a mutga, a morsel of flesh. And then the flesh bom, idhama, was formed underneath the flesh. A skin, a layer, I mean bone. And then from bone, it be, the bone became clothed with more flesh. And it began to form. And before long, in the stages of evolution, you, you have a tiny fetus, a little miniature human being. Praise be to Allah. Only Allah can create like this. And throughout the whole process, that created matter had submitted itself. Throughout the whole process, Allah says to us, when you come into a conscious life, don't die in that state of consciousness, except as one who has reached the fulfillment of your confirmation as a Muslim. And hold ye fast to the rope. You know, I, I don't care who you are, who we are. Look, don't be fooled. I know sometimes we are made to appear people. We, we look at people who may appear to be bigger in statue or above the law of nature. They may appear to be powerful in a sense by what they have. But I'm here to tell you that Allah extends a rope to everything in his creation, particularly this is for the human being. And this rope, without the rope, without us holding on to the rope, it's impossible for us to evolve upon the created nature Allah has given us. Allah says in the Quran, bihablillahi, Hold you fast, hold ye all together. Wa'atasimu bihabli. Bihabli. This habl, this habl. It's like a rope. And Allah says, it's, he stretches it out and do not become divided amongst yourselves. Several conversations. Some people say the rope is the Quran. Some say the rope is the sunnah of Muhammad, sallallahu alayhi wa But if you understand the Quran and the sunnah of Muhammad, they were one. They were not separate from each other. They were one. Meaning that there was no sunnah until the Quran was revealed. So the Quran influenced this sunnah to be followed in Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa And I, as proof, we don't have time to go through it, but I give you just an area where you can go look and study this concept. Prior to the Quran being revealed to Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, the scholars, not even the scholars, let's say the Arabs of his day who were idol worshippers, polytheists, cult uh, worshippers, they all agreed to the fact that Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was not a deviant person. They all agreed that he was a decent person. And they all agreed that he was a righteous person, that he was a truthful person. They all gave testament to this. So when, Quran, when the Quran was revealed in Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam began to profess La ilaha illallah, Muhammad Rasulullah, there's only one God and Allah, there's, only no, there's no God but Allah and Muhammad is his messenger. Then did they begin to reject them. Now, prior to the Quran being revealed and all of these great accolades are given about Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, but yet nobody was following him. Nobody was following Muhammad. He didn't have a tradition that was worthy of being followed. It wasn't until the Quran came and the Quran brought something to him that was necessary for the evolution of that dead society to evolve, which was education. He brought the proper education to the people. Iqra, bismi rabbika khalaq. 
And this education, this reform became the thing to follow. So here we are holding on to this rope. It's Quran, it's the Sunnah, but it's also something that existed prior to the Quran and the Sunnah even becoming known to man. Something that was given to man from his very beginning. And that is the fitra, the natural orientation, the original nature of the human being. I, I used to hear, I've heard it several times from scholars amongst this community. That most of the real help that we will ever get. You know, you can get a lot of information from everything outside of you, all this external information that come to you. And it's your choice if you want to use it, if you want to plug it in, if you want to use it to to improve your own self. But the real help came from the nature that Allah created you with in the first place. The real help. Meaning the essence of the real help. And turn thy disposition to the religion, the way of the Hanif. The way of the Hanif. And this Hanif is a natural disposition in the human being inclined to just want to do right. Inclined to want to do right. And Allah says, Fitratullahi lati nasa alayha. This is the natural or the original pattern. This fitra, the original pattern in which Allah created nature on. Fatrun nasa alayha. And then he fashioned the human being upon the same pattern. So Allah has put in us the ability to cling to something. If we can get it from nowhere else, it's in your nature. And it has enough. It is so powerful that it can resurrect a dead life. We're all in need of this rejuvenation. We're all in need of this rope. None of us are exempt from this rope. For Allah says at one time you were enemies to each other. I know I was. I, I, I ain't always been a conscious Muslim. We were enemies to each other. And Allah says he joined our hearts together in love through his mercy when we were on the brink of the pit of fire. Can you imagine that? Being on the brink of the pit of fire. You, can you imagine being at the edge and not even knowing it? I remember one, at one point my life was on the edge it was so far off the edge, I, I probably had, I was, hold, I was on just by the toe of one foot. And I don't know where, I don't know why, but Allah chose me for something. And, it, and Islam didn't just come and slap me in the back of the head. Islam didn't just come lasso me and pull me back off a cliff. For those of you who, who know me, you've heard me say this before, that... I was at a point in my life, I, I, had, I, was, I was in prison, and I had done seven calendar years up until this particular day when I had this epiphany in the cell. I had this epiphany, and the, the strong urge for me to resist the life that I had been living came about like this. The urge just came for me to, to say that this is not me. And right that day, that day, it was the first time I actually gave the good nature in my spirit attention that it needed. I was ignoring it for so long. And it was 18 months later that I became a Muslim. From that day, 18 months later, I became a Muslim. So what happened in between all that time? If I, could, if I may compare this, I was, I was living, I was like Muhammad the prophet before the Quran came. I just, the, the difference between me and Muhammad, sallallahu alayhi wa is he responded to his nature long before when my nature had woke me up to a death that I had been experiencing all this time. And Allah 
put in between me 18 months before he actually gave me what was sustained the real life that he wanted me to have, which was Islam. It came later. You know why I tell this story? I'm not ashamed to tell this story because brothers and sisters, don't ever think that you've arrived. You constantly, especially in the society we live in, as fast as it is, as influential as it is, as negative as it can be, you, we have to die several times over to come into the life that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has willed for us. Allahu Akbar. And don't be afraid of death. This, you know, don't be afraid of dying because in order for you to have a real life, you have to constantly die to things that are taking you out of the real life. You have to. I'm, 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 when I, I'm, I'm not speaking to you from a khutbah that is written. I'm speaking to you from a khutbah that's on my heart. Don't be afraid of death. Because death is a thing that is a prerequisite for the real life that we need to achieve the real goal. And the real goal is nowhere in this life, brothers and sisters. It's not here in this life. It's not here in this life. Don't be fooled by some of the, uh, I call it the superficial rewards in this life. I guarantee you, none of them will follow you in the hereafter, but that which is written on the soul, meaning that which performance you do of good. That's the only thing that's going to follow you. The bad going to follow you, too. And because you know the bad is going to follow you, it should encourage us to want to do more of the good. Inshallah. May Allah continue to preserve us and grant us piety and restraint from evil and lift us with the Quran and the nature, the example of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Rabbana la tukulubana ba'ada id hadaytana wahab lanna min nadunka rahma innaka anta wahab. Alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen. Bismillah. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in, in closing you know it, it don't it don't it does not take you know I, I want all of us to realize that the Juma Friday Juma is not just an obligation for us to come together it's for us to be reminded of some things and the speaker is reminding himself just as he is reminding those who are listening to the speaker. Don't, don't, I don't want you to think that I'm exempt from this. I used to hear Imam Muhammad say we're living in a wonderful time. And since I've heard him say that, my perception or my outlook on the time has been different. And no matter how much the media may try to make us think that the time is not a wonderful time. It's a wonderful time. The Quran says, Let there arise out of you an ummah, a community of people enjoining or Yadiruna, uh, Yadiruna, uh, inviting people to what's good. You know, right now is the perfect opportunity. The world is primed for Islam. The world is primed for Islam. If we say Islam means, if you say Islam means peace, well, right now, if you practice Islam, a way of life that promotes peace, you think the world is in need of what you have to offer? Think about this, though. Think about this. I mean, you, you can't miss it on the news, social media. You see a lot of things that are deficient of peace. There's no such thing as you can't do dawah. There's no such thing as I don't know what to say to them people. You follow a religion that is predicated upon submission and peace. Invite them to all that is good. 
وَيَعْمُرُونَ بِالْمَعْرُوفِ And you enjoying what is right. You enjoy